The sun is shining. The space birds are chirping. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. This biodome is coming together nicely. So we're halfway done with the factory, 90 AI limiters per minute, and I am stoked to get going on the other half of my electromagnetic control rod, 135 stators per minute. A lot of stators means a lot of wire and a lot of steel pipes, and that is going to take a lot of machines. Just the 34 smelters, 11 foundries, 69, nice, constructors, and 28 assemblers. All of this is gonna take a lot of space. My plan is to bring in the stators and the AI limiters and bring them together in the middle and make the electromagnetic control rods on a sky bridge between the two buildings and then put a drone port on top. So in order to get these buildings spaced out properly, I went ahead and made the shell of the sky bridge as you can see in the background. That way I can properly gauge where to put my stator factory and have the output come to the right place. So today we're gonna knock out our wire and steel pipes. So make sure to stick around to the end to see some more progress on our big biodome design as well. It's gonna look awesome. Speaking of being awesome, hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next episodes of this build. It's a great way to support the channel. So first things first, we need 1000 iron ore per minute. So we're using that node over there for our copper alloy ingots for the first part of the factory. But luckily there's three more nodes to play with here on this site. So we need another Mark III miner for the steel products and then two Mark II miners for the iron wire, which you're looking at here. So easy peasy with a simple design. And I think these low slung buildings are a good look in the middle of the vaulted biodome. We'll figure out how to get that iron where it needs to go in a bit, but now I want to lay out the steel factory. This will take a pretty big platform as we're going to lay down 11 foundries here side by side to make 608 steel ingots per minute. We're going to use the solid steel ingot recipe to make us a bit more productive from our inputs, uh, iron ore and coal, iron ingots and coal. It's my favorite steel recipe, but it does take a bit more effort because you have to use a row of smelters to make the ingots rather than just feeding the foundries with that ore directly. I've come up with a nice way to pair everything up here and keep this factory from completely sprawling out. I realized that the four smelters for the iron ingots, which make 30 iron ingots each per minute, match the needs of three foundries, which need 40 iron ingots per minute for the solid steel ingot recipe. So I've broken this part up into sections matching up those foundries and smelters. So I'm plopping the smelters right on top of the foundries and then doing a top feed directly down into the foundries. So each group of four smelters goes into a little manifold and then three splitters feed them into lifts that go down to the foundries. Then we'll collect all of the steel ingots down here at this end. I've decided to keep this whole steel base section about as compact as we can make it and put the constructors on top of the stack of smelters and foundries that we already have done. The steel pipe is one of the rare things in Satisfactory, along with AI limiters, I think, that doesn't have any alternative recipes. So the standard recipe calls for 21 constructors for our 405 steel pipes per minute that we need. So I thought I might be able to fit those right on top, but there's only room for 17 of those 21 constructors. So I'm gonna do something I almost never do. And that is use power shards in anything but a miner. But I normally only use power shards in miners so we can get more out of each node and then just build as many machines as we need. Not this time. We crank up four of these constructors up to 200%. We'll only need the 17 that will fit on this platform. And especially since update six respawned all of the power slugs, it's not really a resource we need to be too concerned about using up at this point in the game. So this makes it easy to bring the steel ingots up from the bottom and run them through our simple manifold here to make our steel pipes. They'll be collected here on the other side and then come out to go to our stator factory, which we'll be working on in our next video. Before we decorate this building, let's figure out how we're gonna get this iron ore over here from those miners for both the pipes and the wire. I'm thinking we'll make a little bridge over and bring the two belts up from the miners and across. It'll definitely look a lot better than running them along the ground or something like that. And lo and behold, it does. So we have the 405 coal per minute coming on the bridge from the other side of the ridge. So we need to extend that and bring it over to the feeding point of our steel ingot foundry. 
I think that looks okay, but we're gonna have to figure out the intersection of that and the glass from the biodome when the time comes. One thing I really do like the look of is this good view of the coal manifold and how it backs up and starts overflowing, a great demonstration of the power of the manifold. Now that we have our inputs basically sorted, we need to do a little decoration. One would think that I have some master plan that I worked out ahead of time on what it should look like, but not the case. I just kind of go with the flow and if it isn't perfect, that's okay. It's just a game. Just a game I've spent 510 hours playing just on this save, but a game nonetheless. I'm gonna take advantage of the new half foundations to do arch columns, kind of like we have on the front of the building, just longer. Then I'm gonna put some lights on the back to have the light shine through. It's gonna be bright green like the machines. I think it looks pretty good, maybe a little bit simple. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this part of the build and the rest of the build as we go along. Now let's make sure that everything is working. We have the 400 or so iron ore coming in and the 400 or so coal per minute flowing in. And it looks like I uh, totally screwed up a few of the mergers and put the outputs in the wrong place but at least those minor things are easily fixable. Pretty good for me. All right, we got the steel pipes coming out, so let's move on to our wire. We need a ton of it, 1,080 wire per minute. This is 20 smelters of iron ingots and 48 constructors of iron wire. Iron wire is a great alternate recipe since it eliminates copper, but it comes at the cost of using way more machines and taking up a lot more space. This is a ratio of five smelters to 12 constructors, so we're gonna build a stack of four modules of that combination, where each floor is a four by eight set of foundation. This will make for a pretty tall building, but it's better than sprawling it all horizontally outside the bounds of our design. And I think it might end up looking pretty good. Each module is gonna have five smelters out in front and a stack of two sets of six constructors, like so. We have the added complication of outputting 1,080 wire per minute from this factory, so we're gonna need two Mark V belts coming out. To make that simple, we're going to output the first two modules to one belt and the second two modules to the other belt. We're gonna carry over that split between the two modules to make twin towers of stators in our next video. So be sure to subscribe to catch that right away when it drops. I have to say building all of these things was a little tedious, but that is satisfactory in a nutshell. Even if it gets a little boring, it still normally pays off in the end when your design comes together. Besides, I like to have a little contest with myself to see how fast I can bang in the belts without messing up. Spoiler alert, not very fast because I always mess up. So let's pop in some power, get the recipes in, do a little decoration, and we can do my favorite part, turning this baby on and see what I forgot to do. Looking over everything, I didn't do too bad, just two missing belt hookups and the modular design worked like a charm. Now that we have the wire cooking, it's time to do a little more work on the roof and closing this huge area in of the biodome. I'm gonna do as much as my current amount of silica in my inventory allows, which should be a pretty good bit. It was a little funky to work in the coal belt into the roof, but it's good enough for me. We have 1,080 wire per minute, 405 steel pipes per minute working, and the dome is coming along. So next episode, which will probably be the last one for this electromagnetic control rods factory, will see us build our stator towers, crank out the electromagnetic control rods, and get this factory looking sharp. Thank you for joining me today, and stay stoked out there.